A trade feud between South Korea and Japan, two of the world's leading tech producers, has prompted groups not only in those two countries, but also representing Silicon Valley giants to warn an escalation in tensions could wreak long-term damage across an already buckling global supply chain. Let's uh, get an analysis view. Joining me live via Skype is Sean Roach. Chief Economist for the Asia Pacific Region at SP Global Ratings. Sean, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Now, um, as a leading economist watching this part of the world, what do you make out of the uh, ongoing trade spat between uh, South Korea and Japan? Could the politicization of the supply chain pose a threat to the regional and global economy? Politicization of supply chains could be a major threat to global growth now and in the long run. Uh, there has always been an intersection between trade and politics, but this intersection seems to have strengthened in recent years. This has been a global trend, but it's particularly important for Asia given the openness of our economies. And this is important because it raises uncertainty, it undermines trust, and in turn, this makes firms more careful about investing in the future because investment decisions are often hard to reverse. And finally, investment drives growth. It's important in the short term, but it also determines an economy's future output and productivity. So this politicization does mean higher uncertainty, less trust, weaker investment, and unfortunately, slower growth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, um, Japan, however, is considering an expansion in trade restrictions against South Korea as early as this Friday. So there are reports that such a move could trigger temporary disruptions for nearly all of the roughly 52 billion U.S. dollars in goods that sold imports from Tokyo. Now, Sean, uh, could such additional trade measures not only dent South Korean economy, but also other trade partners of South Korea? Yes, a disruption of all trade flows between Korea and Japan uh, could have a major short-term impact on Korea's outlook. Uh, we know that in exports have been weakening already. And uh, in fact, in the last two quarters, it has been investment in Korea uh, that has been especially weak. And that is telling you that uncertainty is already starting to have an effect. But of course, as you say, the impact could be much wider because uh, many of Korea's exports, which in turn rely on inputs from Japan, uh, will go back to Japan. Uh, of course, we know that Korea exports about 25 to $30 billion of products to Japan. Uh, many of those products are semiconductors, which are going to be hit in the first round of export restrictions. And if the restrictions broaden out, you could see all of those products become a little more difficult for Japan to obtain, perhaps a bit more expensive, and that will ripple through the supply chain. And I think what that typically means is that higher prices, uh, more difficult to trade, and ultimately the, the people that will pay the price for trade restrictions will be the consumer. Consumers will start to see higher prices across the products that they have been enjoying at very low prices over recent years. Right, so the ripple effects are trickling down to the average consumers. Uh, how are investors reacting to the Seoul Tokyo trade feud underway? Are, are they bullish or bearish on the outlook? I think at the moment people are taking a wait and see attitude. We have seen some weakness in asset prices. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, technology shares in the last month since we learned about this news have been weaker. Uh, in fact, they've been weaker in Japan than they have been in Korea, but it's hard to really say too much about that. Uh, also, exchange rates in the region have been a touch weaker, so we know the Korean won has depreciated a little bit, which is telling you that uh, markets are starting to price in the effects. But it's so complicated to work out what the impact on supply chains is going to be that it might only be when we see the real effects that market prices move in a substantial way. And the risk is, of course, that if markets do react strongly at some point, that would tighten financial conditions, further un increase uncertainty, and uh, really just force even more downward pressure on, on growth across the region. And, and that would be a, a pretty worrying outcome. Mm -hmm. That would be a very uh, concerning 
a problem. Now, last week, Sean, officials from several U.S. tech companies came to South Korea for a meeting with Samsung to ask about the impact of Japan's trade maneuvering on the market conditions. Is there a possibility that this Seoul Tokyo trace back could even threaten the availability of, um, for instance, Apple iPhones or Amazon's um, computing data services, for instance? Yes, I think that we should start to think about what the impact of this type of policy could be, because it's quite different from a tariff. A tariff is simply uh, an increase in the tax. Uh, you can see it. Uh, it doesn't really change the physical movement of goods across borders. But export restrictions, which increase bureaucratic procedures, can raise a lot of uncertainty and can delay shipments. And in turn, that can raise prices, make it difficult for firms to keep on producing and introduce a lot of complexity into the business environment. So for the end consumers in the supply chain, this is a particularly worrying environment because they have always valued certainty in being able to get the components and the supplies they need to serve their own customers. So I can imagine that uh, some of these U.S. companies would be worried. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, um, Sean Roach, it's in the development that we should all be uh, watching out for. Sean Roach, Managing Director and Chief Economist for the Asia Pacific Region at SP Global Ratings. Many, many thanks uh, to you for your insights this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you.